Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the show. Sorry for not having a regular schedule for releasing videos, but life usually gets in the way, so yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you may be wondering, why does he only make videos for games on the Mega Drive? Well, that's because I know more underrated games on that system than in any other. In the future I may go up a few generations and talk about games on the PS1 or the PS2, but I wanna do them legit. That is, record the footage from the actual console, which is the fat PS2, which is the one I own. I also own the, the slim, but the fat is the best to record games. Moving on in today's show, I'll talk about a Batman game based on the cartoon series with a really long name. The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Personally, I haven't seen the show. May have caught partially one episode on Cartoon Network, but that's it. The game with the same name was made on the SNES and the Mega Drive. The Super Nintendo version made by Konami is usually the one everybody remembers when mentioning it, mainly because it follows the cartoon more faithfully, but more on that later. The Mega Drive or Genesis version was made by a short-lived studio with a peculiar name, Clockwork Tortoise. This was their only developed game and for a first try it was great. And they were a western company, which was rare, because back in the day, the only good games were mostly made by Japanese devs. Ok, back to the topic. The story revolves around Mr. Freeze, one of the Bat's many villains wanting to put Gotham under ice. To distract the heroes, he sets free the supervillains held in Arkham Asylum, the Joker, Two-Face and the Mad Hatter. It's all shown in the intro with some very nice cinematics. The dark and gloomy set of the opening defines right away the mood of the game. Another thing you might notice is that if you let the demo go, it will repeat itself, but the music will go on without looping. I've listened to it. It lasts for about 6 minutes until it loops. It's amazing given that the game occupies only 2 megabytes. In today's standards, that's not even big enough for an mp3 file. For that amount of space, let me tell you, it offers 4 levels, each one with approximately 3 sections, giving you the variety of 12 or more zones for you to try and finish. Now, when I say try, I mean it, because the game is hard as balls. It's a side-scroller beat-em-up run and gun. How do you mix the two? Easy. When you are close to an enemy, Batman or Robin punches or headbutts the enemy. When the enemy is out of reach, our heroes throw their unlimited supplies of bat ranks. And that's about it. The game re revolves around these gameplay mechanics, with the exception of one or two sections where you only shoot batarangs. Now, let me explain the batarangs. There are three types of them that are distinguished by their color, blue, red and green, that will charge to a more powerful burst if you let the gauge on the top right corner fill up. The blue ones are the weakest, with the faster reloading time and a reasonable spread shot. The green ones are the more powerful, that can take away enemies with one hit, but have a small spread shot. Finally, the red ones that stand in the middle of the green and the blue power-ups, with a decent rage and effectiveness. If you collect many power-ups of the same league, their power will increase. My personal favorite bat ranks are the green ones, because they are especially great to defeat bosses faster. But, if you wanna cover more enemies and don't care about potency, then I suggest you start with the red ones. The four levels of the game are organized by the supervillains the duo has to fight. The first level is the Joker, where you'll also need to defeat Harley Quinn, along with his goons. If you try to pass this level for the first time, I'll assure you that you won't even make it to the first boss. The second level is Two-Face, where you'll face him and his blimp, including an R an R-type shooting sequence, which feels to take forever. Up next is the best sequence of the game, the Mad Hatter. I won't spoil it for you, 
but try and get this far, if you plan to play the game. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Finally, it's the big showdown with Mr. Freeze himself. Once you press start in the title screen and see the first stage, you'll notice right away the 3D effect that's going on in the buildings. This prowess is achieved with the clever use of parallax scrolling, being the ultimate showdown of this technique demonstrated in the last section of the third level, the conf confrontation with the Mad Hatter. Again, don't wanna spoil you the pleasure of making that far in the game, but here's 10 seconds of it. Another technical feature present is the rotation of Sprite, something everybody thought was exclusive to their beloved SNESs. It shows that with the power of blast processing everything's possible. Of course all this eye candy is accompanied by a great artistic design with dark but not too much graphics that suit the Dark Knight style like a glove. Aside from the visual department, the sound also shines on its own. The industrial heavy techno music feels like it belongs in a Batman movie and will make your head bang in some boss battles, ultimately costing you one life, but still. The music was composed by none other than Jasper Kidd, the great musician who composes today for such hit titles as Assassin's Creed and the Hitman series. Curious fact, he only used the FM synthesizer on the console to produce sound, leaving out the PCM and the PSG chip, which is quite amazing. Of course, not everything in life is perfect, as such, this game has some flaws that may turn off some potential players. For once, the main criticism made is that some sections of certain levels are too long, like the two-phase flying sequence which I mentioned earlier. Here's some footage, fast forward. It just drags on and on. Another criticism made is that the game is all the same, just shoot your way through. Some even criticize the music, but to that point we're just dealing with haters and nintendrons. To the rest of the negative sides, I gotta say, personally I kinda agree with them. But I find that the game throws just enough challenge and variety to make you keep coming back for more. No matter how much you die, and you die a lot. The SNES version of the game as the music from the show, as well as cutscenes and some extra vi variety. The Mega Drive version which I'm talking about doesn't have any of that. And let me ask you, does that make it less of a game? Of course not, in fact, I find the Genesis version more memorable and fun to play than the Super Nintendo one. The orchestrated sounds characteristic of the system don't stand out as much as the techno music from the black box. All in all, do I recommend this game? You bet your ass I do. It provides a challenge worthy for the so-called hardcore gamers and gives you a feeling of accomplishment when you beat that hard boss that always gave you a rough time. There's plenty of variety to keep the game interesting accompanied with excellent visuals and sound. A 10 out of 10 for me. Heck, why not? This is my review after all. So an 11 out of 10 just because. It may not be perfect but it's fun. Thank you for watching my videos and don't forget to click the annotations and subscribe and all that. I will be making more videos during this Easter, during the Easter uh, vacation, so stay tuned for more. I will be finishing my Max Payne walkthrough. In fact, uh, as uh, at the time of this recording, I don't know if they it will be already finished or, or if I will be releasing the videos, but you'll check soon enough. Uh, after this video, I will be putting also the the music for the main 
for the main title of the game that, that I've been mentioning here, which is great and I think it will be a great addition to the best Genesis music. Thank you so much for watching my video, don't forget to leave a like, it always helps and if you like my work and want to see more, subscribe.